just on the platform. Uh, can everyone hear me? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. I'll just start sharing my uh, presentation, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, is it visible? Yes, ma'am. The slides are visible, ma'am. The sides are visible. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for that short profile and short introduction of myself. Uh, as I have always been entrusted with the task of taking up a session in the afternoon, and I'm sure uh, afternoon session is always a very, 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 very tiring and a uh, exhaustive session for the participants, actually. Uh, but um, I respect uh, IoT, and I am thankful to IoT for giving me a platform to uh, serve uh, these um, uh, 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 sessions uh, for my uh, different participants across India. So uh, my today's uh, topic is um, research ethics, a comprehensive guide for all. I'm sure that everyone is involved into research and we more, we all have a pretty good idea about what is research and what are the ethics. But I'm sure uh, there would be few key takeaways from my presentation and everybody would benefit from them. So it's like, um, now let me start. So it says that a smile is a handshake with uh, with you all. It's because reason being because post COVID, you know, when we all used to be meet face to face, but since we are um, you know scattered across India, so there goes a big smile from my side to each one of you who's on this platform, and I welcome you all to this research methodology workshop, which is starting from today by IoT. Now uh, I'll have a small ice breaking session. Uh, what I'll do is like, uh, I don't really, I really don't want that I immediately come and start things with ethics and research, but for a time being for just maybe for another five minutes, I'll take uh, to have a ice breaking session with, with you all. And uh, what I would like to uh, do is like, I'll request everyone who's on this platform. Uh, to give us a short introduction of themselves, uh, maybe through uh, voice or maybe through chat box. But uh, I'll prefer to have people, um, uh, you know, uh, giving the introduction in just fractions of seconds. You know, what is your name and where are you working and where are you uh, stationed? So I'll just take five minutes uh, to go ahead because let, let's get some tally and, and understand each other for a while. So uh, can we start, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. All right. So uh, let me start with uh, maybe Akshay Tandanji. Are you here? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I can hear you, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, yes. Uh, ma'am, I am from Chennai. I am working in SRM Dental College, Patan Glatur. All right, sir. You're welcome. Welcome to the presentation today. Thank you. Amruta Rangi, ma'am. <clears throat> Ma'am, are you there? All right. Uh, Ma'am. Gigi, yes. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, just a quick uh, round of introduction of yourself, please. Amruta, madam? Yes, ma'am. Uh, just, just a small introduction of yourself. My name is Amrita Malvira. I am first year MPharm student from uh, Sandeep Foundation. All right. Sandeep okay. Institute of Computer Science. Uh, which place is it? Nasik. Where, ma'am? Nasik. Nasik. Okay. 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 Right. Okay. Next. Uh, next, please. Anarchana Ayvit, madam. No, not Ashik, Ashik, uh, I, that's what I can see. Daisy Vishnu, uh -huh, yes, I can see the blue dots. Huh? Ma'am, quickly, please. Hello? All right, Daisy Vishnu ji. Darshini K. Darshini K. Dhani Lakshmi, <clears throat> madam. All right, those who are there who can hear my voice and you who are listening, please unmute your mic and just give your introduction and then we start with our presentation, please. Hello? Hello? Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Mm -hmm. 
myself sakshi vaikar okay uh, from uh, sandeep institute of pharmaceutical science mm -hmm. i am in m pharm first year quality assurance all right ma'am welcome to so, dr or madam dr Ma myself jyoti assistant mm -hmm. professor department mm -hmm. of journalism and mass communication sri siddhartha center for media studies karnataka ma'am welcome ma'am welcome good? to my uh, thank you ma'am Right, right, right. All right. Yes, sir. I can see the blue dot. Hmm. My name is Rakesh Kumar. I am from Tambaka. From Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Pharmaceutical science. In fast, classic. All right. Okay. Okay. Welcome, ma'am. Welcome. Hmm. Good afternoon. Hello. Hmm. Good afternoon. 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 Good All right. Good afternoon, madam. Good afternoon, sir. Me is yes, hmm. Ragnandan Reddy from Telangana, working as a lecturer in zoology, government degree college, madam. Okay, zoology. Okay, sir. Welcome, welcome to my presentation, sir. Thank you. Thank okay. You, madam. Nice. Yeah. Hello. Yes. Madam, yes. Audible. Uh, yes. Yes. You are. Hmm. Uh, good afternoon, all. Uh, my name is Professor Swayam Shah. I am from uh, JSPM JSPM Hadap Sir Pune. I am working as head of department for the MCA school. All right, so welcome to my presentation. Thank you. And, huh, yes. This is Sahili Gangude from uh, Sandeep Institute of Pharmaceutical Science, Maharashtra. All right, so we've got a lot of people from funding. Welcome, welcome. Okay. And who else would like to give the introduction in just fractions of seconds? Huh. All right. Anyone else who can hear me? Uh, good afternoon, good afternoon. Sarika uh, Yes. I'm Sarika Kharche from Sandeep Institute of Pharmaceutical Science, Nashik, Maharashtra. All right. All right, Sarika, madam. Welcome. Who else? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma'am. Archana Devi. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. I'm Archana Devi from Anayvala Tartan Science College, Tamil Nadu. I'm studying MCOM. Ma. All right. All right. You're welcome. So we've got a lot of MCOM people because my base is uh, from commerce only. So I was so happy to see you all. All right. Anyone else would like to give the introduction or shall I proceed my, my presentation? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is Maitri. This is Dr. Yes. Maitri from Uttarangam Government ah. College, Vellur, ma'am. Assistant Professor. All right, Matli, ma'am. Welcome, welcome. All Thank right. You. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, let me uh, now. Uh, let me uh, start with my uh, presentation. Uh, so that that was just a round of a small introduction for uh, like each one of you. Okay. Uh, S. Kalmarkasai, head of Department of Political Science. You're welcome, sir. All right. So let me proceed. So that was just a small round of introduction I wanted to have, and, and just to see people. Um, I can see that I can have. I have people from, uh, you know, Bangalore, Nasik, Pune, myself from the UP. And so many other places. Okay, so my presentation today is uh, talking uh, is all related with ethics, and I'm sure each one of you uh, is from academic background. So we definitely need a lot of things which are related with ethics and research. So now my my presentation today will uh, relate with the um, research ethics, and uh, it talks about what exactly the research ethics are. So now let, let's have an uh, uh, understanding about ethics, uh, maybe for another five seven minutes. Now it says that there definitely ethic is something which basically relates to the ethical principles that one should follow uh, while doing any kind of research activities. It could be related with your designing. It could be related with the implementation of the research. It could be maybe the uh, people who are involved in the research. It could be related with the society, with the participants, uh, maybe the kind of resources people are using, or maybe the kind of misconduct that people actually uh, commit uh, knowingly or unknowingly. So it's it's basically. Very very clearly it shares that it says that a discipline dealing with what is proper course of action for man a branch of philosophy that looks at what is good and what is bad now it also talks about a system of obligation that we have towards others. Others, basically, we talk about the participants, uh, maybe the society, maybe the kind of resources we are using, or maybe the kind of uh, rules and regulation that one should adhere to while we go for any kind of research. Now, it says also that uh, also known as moral philosophy involves systematizing, defending, and recommending concepts of right and wrong. A study of principles guiding the good of the individual within the context of social interaction of the society. 
so ultimately basically uh, ethics is what is a something which provides benefits to all the participants and it is basically deciding what is right and what is wrong maybe we are uh, maybe from the science background or maybe from the commerce background or maybe from the geology humanities medical anything everyone is involved into uh, research now when we talk about ethics it basically we are talking about three kind of uh, ethics it talks about the uh, meta ethics it talks about the normative ethics and it talks about the applied ethics now when we are talking about meta ethics it's basically it's more related with the ethical judgment we are trying to study the moral thoughts and the moral language of the people or maybe the kind of or the area where you want to do your research it actually talks about the morality now morality is what something which we actually do the action that we are doing that is known as the uh, morality so meta ethics is related with the application of the moral notions now moral notion matlab what it's basically it says the concepts we are trying to implement the concepts of the ethical judgment now what is right what is wrong that what we talk about for example uh, we know what is good what is bad maybe if you are helping somebody it is good if you are harming anyone it is bad now what is correct in case if you are traveling in a bus without ticket it is wrong now if you have if you have adhere to the rules and regulation of any organization that is correct so that is known as the meta ethics um, meta um, uh, meta uh, 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 ethics now second is talk we talk about the normative ethics now addressing the question what ought to be what is right and what is wrong that is known as the uh, normative um, uh, uh, ethics now normative is again it's all of everything is related with our norms uh, everything is related with our values so normative is all related with the uh, theories uh, which uh, have been uh, propagated by socatri scant swart bentham etc and they are more like a guideline to us. like what kind of guidelines we should follow when we are doing any kind of research and the last one is your applied ethics now applied ethics basically it relates with the any kind of field it could be engineering it could be biomedical it could be humanities it could be any other field and here we are trying to apply the concepts of our norms of our values and Uh, and then we are trying to find out what is right and what is wrong so it's more of the uh, concept or the guidelines which are provided by the ethics now now basically we have three kind of theories when we talk about ethics it is deontology uh, utilitarianism and virtue ethical theory now when we are talking about the uh, when we are talking about uh, deontology now what it, what it, it now what it talks about is basically states that people should adhere to the obligations and duties that they have while making any decision whenever we talk about the ethical theories it basically emphasizes on a decision rule now what is the meaning of decision rule is basically when decision making uh, we are talking about the decision making when ethics are in play we have been talking about ethics what is our ethics it basically the kind of a uh, principles that one should follow while doing any kind of act it can be related with your research it can be related with your business it can be related with your profession so deontology is basically a class of theory that tells us to adhere to the obligations and the duties when we are uh, engaged in decision making and when we are engaged in decision making then only the ethics they come into uh, play for example now now everyone will keep in mind what is right and what is wrong now for example it says that if, for example if there's a person now if there's a person who is getting late for the duty now if a person is getting late for the duty so what what kind of uh, duty what kind of obligation the person has for example for example is he going to uh, uh, break the speed break uh, speed uh, limit or uh, what is he trying to do maybe he is going to speed up his car bike or what kind of whatever vehicle he is um, using so that is what the obligation is your obligation is towards the society that is not to harm anyone so it basically says we, the person will always uh, follow the obligation now when you the friend you point and ethics a kind of a deontology uh, ethics that one has somebody has got a duty uh, towards uh, somebody or the obligation
now uh, now it these duties now for example a teacher has a duty or an obligation towards the students or uh, while for teaching or for helping them so on and so forth so the at times what happens is that the, these duties they also get into conflict for example i was just talking about a person who is getting late for the duty so will he be breaking the uh, speed breakers will he be harming people and reaching to his office on time or um, uh, or no so that is what is known as conflict so that is why we say that it is the ethics of an individual which are in conflict whether he should speed the um, whether he should uh, proce uh, proceed further breaking all the barriers or he should follow his ethics and if he has got late let him get late for the uh, duty so it says like you know uh, like for example uh, you know there can be number of uh, uh, obligation uh, for the ethical resolution also now because i have got not of slides to take care otherwise i would have discussed with each one of you what do you actually think well, how we could rectify this conflict uh, obligation for uh, the ethical resolution then the second one that we have got it is known as the utilitarianism it says that here the here the person has got the ability to predict the consequences of an action now uh, predict the action basically it says that in case if you're doing anything wrong what would be the repercussion for example if if the uh, if the person is making any decision he is predicting what will go wrong if i am supposing if i am a market researcher and or if i happen to be the ceo of the company i am predicting okay i have got the demand for um, 500 bags or 600 bags in case if there is a lockdown or in case if there is a strike i know my my goods will get blocked so that is a kind of a utilitarian uh, utilitarianism uh, approach ethical theories that where i have got two things there are two types of um, uh, utilitarianism one is act and another is rule now for example when when the person performs any act it is being acted for the benefit of the maximum people regardless of the personal feelings or maybe the kind of uh, you know different societal constraints that can that come that can come on way when we talk about the rule it talks about the law and it is concerned with fairness any kind of act which is being done it should be fair for a simple example for example if a lady is pregnant so it is unfair on the part of the pathologist to say whether what what the gender is of the child so this is unethical however you however when we talk about this uh, utilitarianism here again we are predicting okay if everything goes right there will be a kind of a normal delivery so that is that uh, the act and rule is where you are violating the rule and you know the repercussions are going to be bad because in case if you're caught up in the rules now if you mess up with the rules i know the you land in trouble for sure so both of these utilitarianism it basically talks about the ability of the person to um, you know uh, to take the decision now let me come back to the same example for example if a person was getting late for the meeting now if that person happens to be the ceo of the company if the ceo of the company has got late if he have he was if he was running late for the meeting now will he be breaking the uh, speed is it okay now what kind of thoughts you have i have no idea but the, he is in a conflict because as a ceo he has got ethical duties towards the society that is not to harm as a ceo of the company he has a duty that he ha he should reach the office well on time so now he is in a dilemma whether to follow the rule or the law or to or he is he going to break the law or the rule and uh, he is going to mess up now simultaneously he is ethically correct that he should not speed up because he has a responsibility towards the society of not harming anybody but on the other hand he has the responsibility of reaching well on time for the meeting uh, he is a decision maker he is going to predict what would be the consequences now the third one happens to be the virtue uh, ethical theory it basically says that you know uh, you are being judged by the character uh, you can judge a person by character that is the ethical theory rather than the any action which is being taken now for example if if the late for the meeting and if he speeds up so we will take action as per the uh, action or we would take action because the action that he has taken that he has broken the uh, rules of the speed there it would be different but here the virtue basically says 
that we are judging the person by the character not the action which has been taken for example if there's a person who has plagiarized a paragraph from somewhere and his colleague comes to know and the person who has plagiarized he has forgotten to give the reference of the uh, copied para so what would be the feelings now here uh, it could be that you know the person could understand okay he the person might have um, you know uh, miss out uh, missing the uh, giving the reference uh, from where he has picked up the para or a chart on the other hand if the person's reputation is well or if the person is in a continuous habit of misconduct are ye to hamesha hi aise cheating karta hai so that is the character that the one has built up then the action would be quite different so we will be judging the person according to the character and not the action now if the rapport is good the person may be judged uh, may not be judged harshly on the other hand side if the repo is of a bad or if the repo is of misconduct type then we can uh, actually judge the person harshly so that what uh, that what it says about the uh, three um, uh, three ethical theories now let me proceed now let's let's we have talking about ethics now what is the meaning of ethics we can have ethics anywhere they can be any kind of personal ethics they can be kind of professional ethics professional ethics it could be related with the doctor it could be related with the teacher or maybe the lawyer no or they can be political ethics they can be social ethics so they can be different kind of ethics that one can be prone to for example uh, in in the case of personal uh, ethics uh, we have the we have got the responsibility of reporting an accident we have got the responsibility of not stealing of not doing fraud or maybe uh, we have we uh, you know we we should not be gossiping or maybe we do not um, we should not insult anyone so these are the these are the ethics that one has to follow of uh, honesty integrity kindness so on and so forth for example there can be some political ethics there can be societal ethics for example uh, you know there can be ethics which are logical but they are unethical for example if there's a lawyer if he knows that my my client is a uh, victim or or the culprit sorry i stand corrected if he is the culprit but still out of his ethical behavior he is going to save his client so that is a kind of a professional ethics that you have got now there can be some ethics related in business also maybe for example you should not do any kind of false advertisement or maybe there the fair treatment should be given to the employees there should not be any demarcation on the basis of the, of the gender biasness or maybe the fair wages uh, should always be uh, given uh, to the people and on the other hand side uh, if the employees are there they should be law abiding employees there should be transparency so on and so forth now there can be of course since we are talking about research ethics so we know now what is the meaning of ethics let me just throw some light on the research also there can be clinical and social science research we know that a lot of people are from medical uh, as i just uh, got through three introduction now uh, any kind of clinical research is again related with the medical part of it and any kind of social research is all related where we can generalize the uh, principles and the theories the definitely i am from uh, social science so, so definitely when we do any kind of research we talk about the literature review we talk about the data primary secondary data and then you know we apply different kind of test and then we take out the inferences and and uh, definitely uh, we go for the questionnaire to collect data on a various topic however the cl uh, clinical research is more of the uh, medical where you have got lot of experiments uh, uh, taking place and there are different kind of um, human participants on which we do the research so and in the case of um, the clinical and societal uh, definitely there are different phases for example there are four uh, phases in the clinical uh, research and whereas in the social research we have got um, the eight step ladder process which has to be followed while doing any kind of research maybe from um, Uh, problem identification to definition to uh, literature review hypothesis making designing data collection analysis and then talking about the conclusion and the suggestions however there can be uh, basically the clinical research is all related uh, with four uh, phases maybe if um, if a new drug is there or vaccine we are trying to find out what is the effectiveness of that uh, trial so definitely it would be you know testing on thousands of people and then you know uh, finding out um, uh, on whom it is more effective so on and so forth so there are different kind of phases of research so basically the scientific and the clinical or the societal 
Now, when we talk about the scientific research, we are also talking about the features of uh, scientific research. For example, we can always generalize the findings. Um, now, it says that you know, if we have taken up any kind of sample, and if we and if we uh, if we have taken any sample, and then we are doing any kind of um, test, so we can generalize it on the public or the population. Then we've got the universality and the objectivity. For example, there are uh, some procedures which have to be followed while doing uh, such research, and it says that the research should be um, designed in such a manner that it allows the researcher to conduct a similar study and uh, generate the same finding. So it talks about the reliability and the validity that you are getting same result if same kind of tests are applied and to what an extent uh, they are unreliable. Then uh, it talks about the scientific rigor. It, it says that the truth is accepted if there is sufficient evidence to support the claims made through the research process. Such claims have to be withstand the scrutiny of the repeated testing. So it says that they, one of the key features of any kind of scientific research is that they, we are getting the same result um, uh, in, instead of, uh, even if we are repeating the testing. Then, of course, it talks about the originality of research work, that the original ideas, they, it, it should be backed up with appropriate evidence in a clear and a logical manner and of course there has to be a lot of analytical uh, re uh, thinking in the case of scientific research now uh, before i proceed um, uh, there is a small activity that i have planned out i hope that uh, people will uh, participate in this uh, small activity now uh, what you have to do in this uh, small activity is that um, uh, people let me see okay we've got almost uh, 77 uh, participants with us now what you, what i'm asking you is uh, is everyone uh, having a pen or paper hello yes ma'am Yes, Darshini, yes, I can. Ha, okay, you've got a pen and a paper, right? Okay, yeah, even if, if you if you do not, if you're not even carrying a pen or paper, now what you're supposed to do is, like, in your life, what you're supposed to write is, that you have to, you're supposed to write two things, okay? The first thing what you have to write is, uh, in your practical life, is there anything which you have done ethically correct or ethically wrong, okay? Maybe just one point or two, two points. On the second hand side, what I want is what according to people, what are the good ethics and bad ethic examples uh, related uh, with research or maybe not research or according to you, what are the good ethics and bad ethic points? So people, they can come up with in the chat box also. I'll, re I'll uh, reiterate it. What I want from you is in your practical life, Maybe you can quote us one example where your behavior was ethical. Maybe another point where your behavior was unethical. Second thing, what according to you are the uh, you know uh, ethical good ethics and bad ethics? I'll give you two minutes to each one of you. Uh, you can come up in the chat box also, or you can uh, you know unmute your mic, uh, unmute uh, your mic, and let me know. Is the question clear? In your experience, in your life, any example which where you have been quite ethical and unethical, not related with research. Necessary, it's not necessary. It has to be related with research, where you would have where you were ethical and unethical. And second question is, what according to you are the good ethics and the bad ethics? Am I clear? I can see so many uh, names: Divya Madam, Dolly Madam. Dr. Nandini, Dr. Shobhana, can you all hear me? Hello? Ma'am, I can hear you, ma'am. All right. So I, I'm i giving two minutes, ma'am, time in it, two, two minutes time to people. Uh, they can write in the chat box also. One example from their life where they have been ethical and one example where they were unethical. And according to them, what are maybe one point or two point, uh, you know, good ethics and bad ethics? Lakshman sir, Madhavi madam, Manpreet, Megha madam, Monica Pandey. Hello. Okay, Vikas Kedar sir, yes, you've raised your hand. So you can unmute. Vikas Kedar sir has raised his hand.
ियल Mm-hmm. Uh, or uh, uh, dis- uh, creating uh, discrepancies in uh, billing so those are bad ethical behaviors correct very good so you you have given a practical example from hospitality where you know people uh, you know people do such things manipulation right. with the stock or maybe you know uh, the billing part right with the very cash good. and other things and which are which are very common thing as a for a human being all right very good madam very good monica madam you come from where i come from a state institute of hotel management indore i am a faculty over there acha indore okay madhya yes. pradesh okay ma'am very good very good okay and ma'am according to you what could be the uh, two uh, good ethics and two bad ethics in research in not in research research of course i'm talking about ethical okay. for example you just quoted the practical example wonderful what mm-hmm. what according to you maybe in business or uh, maybe in profession what according to okay. you can we do ha hmm. uh, like uh, uh, in a business uh, if you are dealing with clients then hmm. uh, you know quoting something else and providing something else so that can Correct. be an example of ethics or uh, uh, preparing the reports manipulation of data uh, in terms of uh, pnl of the company so these are hmm. uh, ethical points which we can you know Correct. Uh, Okay. Very good, very good, Monica, madam. Thank you so much. Thank okay, you, so okay, uh, very, very good, very, very good. Thank you so much. Okay, okay, all right. Okay, this is. I think I don't know how is it going. All right. Uh, I think I left the meeting. Okay. So, uh, anyone else? Hello, ma'am. Uh, yes, sir. Hmm. Uh, yeah, ma'am. I am from education background. Okay. Uh, so I want to say regarding the research, huh? uh, there are two points for the group ethics. That is, people are passionate about the research. Speak it, sir. Sir, a little louder. Just, just one point. Uh, yeah, ma'am. Uh, hmm. Yeah, ma'am. I, I want to say that uh, there are two points for the group ethics. Huh? I don't know. I have lost the meeting link. Yeah, ma'am, you are audible. I'm ma'am, audible. Ma'am, you are in a meeting, ma'am. You are audible, and your presentation is also visible. No, but ma'am. I cannot see the names, ma'am. I cannot see the names. Uh, just, just one minute. Let me see again. Where am I? Yeah, now I'm here. Yeah, I cannot see the name. Just one. Yeah, ma'am, hmm. I'm audible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are, please. Um, and ma'am, two things about the bad ethics, sir. Uh, hmm. Hello. Hello. Sir, please bring your mic a little closer to your mouth. Uh, yeah, ma'am. I want. Uh, uh-huh. I want to say that many people pay the money to the other person to get the work done in the research. Okay. Uh, do the copy and paste or others works in their own research. So these okay. are the very ethics practice. Okay. Okay. So you are from which department? Uh, I'm from MCA department. MCA. Yeah, ma'am. Computers. Okay. So, okay. Uh, can you tell us some some ethical points related with the uh, computer science? Something. So, ma'am, uh, like uh, whatever the people are doing research in computer science, mm. uh, there is might be the innovation and something very clear to the society. They what? Whatever you do the research, that must be beneficial to the society. all right you're talking about beneficial to society so they are doing research just for the purpose of research that's what you want to say yeah ma'am just for the apis ha huh? yes ma'am 
Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Anyone else from the uh, their personal uh, experiences? John, sir, Joshi, madam, Jyoti, madam, or the students from Sandeep? Are you all connected? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Huh. So let's hear from them also, ma'am. Any practical example? For example, Monica, madam, was quite good. She gave us the practical insight about the what actually are happening in the hospitality desk. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, sir. Swam Shah, sir, you have just spoken. Huh? Who else? One can write in the chat box also, if you don't want to speak. Okay. So, okay. Uh, so let's proceed. So it's it says that the, that was the practical example of ethics. Uh, so I'm sure you must have understood what is the meaning of ethics. So ethic is basically where you where you need to follow certain principles, but however your conscious should allow what is right and what is wrong. So uh, definitely, like for sir, for example, uh, sir also said that from MCA department, they are just doing research for the purpose of research. They are just copying the work of the others and thinking that it's their own. All right. So now, now the meaning of eth ethics is clear. Now the meaning of research is also clear. So all those people who responded, thank you so much. Now let's have a look at the objective of ethic research. It says that any kind of research which is being done, it is basically being done to protect um, uh, the human participants, their dignity, their rights, and the welfare. Secondly, it says that to make sure the research is directed in a manner that assists welfare of the person. That's what Sir exactly said. People are doing research, but however, research should be done in such a manner that it is contributing something to the society. The third objective of research, ethic, uh, research ethics is to inspect particular research event and scheme for the ethical reliability, considering issues such as of controlling risk, protection of privacy, and the progression of the informed consent. Now, this what is the meaning of informed consent? Informed consent basically means is that we should inform the participants that we are doing so-and-so research, and this is the purpose of the research, and they have to give the answers voluntarily. However, at times, you know, what happens is that people, they pay money to the respondents. Okay, please give us the response. I will you. I will pay you the money. So that that happens to be the unethical behavior. We should not pay any money to the participants. However, that is out of the professional code. So these are the three basically objectives of the research ethics. So this is what uh, again it talks about the research ethics. Uh, you know, these are the guidelines, and of course um, we have we have to ensure that no one is getting harmed. There has to be an informed consent from the part of the uh, participants, and of course. Um, uh, People who are a part of this study, they should be well aware about what the research is being done for. And of course, there are different kind of boards also. For example, there can be some committees that can be set up. There can be institutional review boards, uh, which uh, you know they can always uh, uh, see whether the research is ethical or unethical. Uh, keeping in mind that it is not harming anyone's personal reputation, following the professional code, and of course, the dignity and the societal benefit also. So it says that research ethics is the code of guidelines, and um, it, it, all, it all relates with the principles and the standards that help the researchers to uphold the value and the standards of the knowledge construction. Now, when we are talking about the principles and the standards, naturally, these principles, they are always established for the purpose to be followed. However, when we become unethical, these standards, they are set aside. The principles they are set aside. At times, people are cheat, people are frosters, they manipulate things for their own benefit. However, only, uh, however, that is what it talks about the uh, ethics. For example, you know, there can be some kind of responsibility of the institutes also, uh, that they should always, um, they, should, uh, en they should ensure that the research is not unethical. That means there should not be any kind of misconduct. I will just proceed with my slides where you will get a better understanding of the meaning of misconduct and however they, there has to be a respect for the individuals who are the part of the research it could be you know the, the the human dignity or maybe the confidentiality maybe the consent that we need to get it from them or maybe the kind of uh, the data that we are getting how we are going to proceed with that data respect for the third party who are involved in the research or maybe the respect of or or this or the safety of the children or the family and so on and so forth so those principles and the ethics have to be followed now when we talk about the ethical consideration the research process it says that you know the designing of the study should be such 
such that it should be uh, free from uh, any kind of harm being done to the participants. And whenever the participants are being recruited, they have to be informed. Informed basically means that they should be aware what is the research or why it is being done. However, because you know what happens is in the case of research, there's always a relationship between the people and the society. Now, people who take part in the research, we have to respect them. As I told you, they have to be they have to be a free consent from their side to participate in the research process. And however, when we talk about the society, it has to be independent. There should not be any kind of conflict of social responsibility or maybe any kind of discrimination. Then during the intervention or measurement procedure uh, to which the participants are subjected to, of course, when we're talking about the ethical consideration, we have to ensure that you are going to face so and so risk or maybe you are going to face so and so problem. So they should be well aware, well informed. And in the release of the result obtained, or there has to be a confidentiality. Now, in case if you're doing any research for the government organization, then those, that, those research, it has to get published. But in case if you're doing it for the, your own internal decision making, then the confidentiality has to be kept uh, at the extreme case. And after the rele release of the result, we have to ensure that the participants and the communities involved in the research, they benefit as rightly as it was rightly said by Sir from MC department that, you know, the research should be done in such a manner that it benefits the society on the whole. Now, uh, ethic uh, revolution, uh, I think I missed out this slide. Uh, where is it? Okay. Now, there can be some ethics, for example, ethics in the treatment of the respondents. As I told you, these respondents, they are, it can be your male, it can be female, old ladies, uh, poor children, rich people, or maybe, you know, the victims, uh, maybe some under, uh, maybe the minor students, could be, it can be anything. So we have to ensure how we are treating our respondents. We have to be courteous. We have to be uh, transparent. We have to respect their privacy. We have to respect their confidentiality, we have to respect their right of answering or um, whether not answering. So it is their prerogative to decide whether they want to be a part of the research or whether they don't want to be part of the research. And um, of course, uh, when we are talking about the ethical code, the, the data must be collected, it should be correct, there should not be any kind of manipulation. Uh, they, For example, I was just talking about the rights of the respondents, that they have the right to privacy. It's not necessary that everybody is going to disclose their private uh, information information to others, uh, then they, you, they have the right to choose which questions to answer, which not to answer, how much they are, how much to disclose or how much not to disclose, right to safety, and of course, right to be informed. What is the research is being done for? Who are you? From where you have come? Why are you collecting data? Why are you asking? So on and so forth. So it basically talks about that. Now, this is the one of the, of course, this is a chart that I picked up from internet only. It basically talks about the principles of um, ethics. So whenever we are talking about principles or whenever we are talking about research uh, ethics, basically we're talking about the norms and the values of research. Now, norms are something which is said, you know, it's a set of unwritten rules and regulation that one has to follow. Even I am from academic fraternity and my August audience is also from academic fraternity. So everybody will follow their own norms. We do not have the rules and regulation, but still we follow those things. So, uh, for example, you know, when we enter in the class, students, they all stand up. Why? Because it is the norm. OK, it's a, it's a set of unwritten rules and regulation that we have to uh, follow. So we talk about the principles of research that what it says that they can be the following principles, for example, integrity, competence, uh, maybe beneficence, autonomy, honesty, responsibility, privacy, justice, dignity, and uh, the privacy, of course. Now, let me take one uh, one by one. The general principles of research ethics are honesty. Now, of course, the people, uh, the research participants must be aware why the study is being done, whether they have the right to participate in that, uh, what are the possible risk or the benefit that they are going to get out of that research or in case if they are being involved in the research what are the limits of the confidentiality or how uh, maybe in case if they have got any query how they can be contacted so you have to be honest as a researcher that you are able to answer all these questions or the queries uh, related with the research to the uh, our participants there should not be any kind of ma manipulation so it says that being honest with the beneficiaries and the respondents and of course, it says that you have to be honest with the findings and with the methodologies, no fabrication and no falsification with the data or any people who are involved directly or indirectly in the research. 
because whatever they, because uh, you know when when people they are always when people are invited to participate in the research you know, there's always a kind of a strong belief from within that you know it should be all true it should not uh, it should not be uh, fabricated and the uh, data collection or maybe the research it should be such that it is going to benefit the uh, society uh, at large it can be medical it can be social it can be anywhere any any kind of research you are doing then secondly it it talks about the integrity integrity it, say, it says that ensuring honesty and sincerity uh, fulfilling agreements and promises as i told you earlier also when we were talking about the ethical theories deontology uh, there we talked about that there is an obligation on the part of the people to respect their promises so is the case here also when we are doing any kind of research in case if we are talking to the participants we have got an obligation that we should fulfill our promises or uh, you know we should be very very true to them why we are here what purpose it is going to serve what are the risk and the benefits associated in case if you be a part of the research so of course do not uh, create false expectation to make false promises that is one of the biggest ethics that one should have in the research then uh, then it talks about the objectivity it's it, uh, objectivity is basically avoiding any kind of biasness in the uh, research maybe the data collection or basically we once we are able to collect the data the main work is of the data interpretation or maybe once we have collected the data through questionnaire or maybe to to schedule or to survey that means we have to be very very transparent we have to be very judicious in deciding what is right what is wrong which data to include which not to include or so on and so forth and of course um, people have got an autonomous right whether they agree with the research being participant or whether they do not agree to be uh, whether they do not agree to participate in the research so one of the uh, biggest principles of research ethic is the objectivity that we have to inform the participants why we are here what are the risks what are the benefits and um, uh, you know and there is no compulsion on their part to give the answer it is their prerogative to decide which questions to answer which not to answer whether they want to participate in the research whether they don't want to participate in the research it is their uh, uh, prerogative then it says another principle of research ethic is the respect for the respondent it says uh, it talks about the autonomy autonomy basically means we you are throwing the ball in the uh, in, in the court of the uh, uh, my participant to decide whether they want to be a part of the research or whether they don't want to be a part of the research as i told you that there should not be any kind of money payment sh uh, that should not be made to the participants to answer so autonomy is basically it is their decision to decide whether they want to be a part of the research or whether they don't want to be a part of the research and it's it says autonomy which requires those who are capable of deliberation about their personal goals to be treated with respect for their capacity for self determination and protection of the person with impaired or diminished autonomy which requires that those who are dependent or vulnerable be afforded security against harm or abuse for example if we are in a, if we are dealing with minors or maybe handicapped people or maybe the victims of the heinous crime there we have to be very 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 careful that how we are dealing with those respondents how we are dealing with their psychology mental state mental status how we are dealing with their statements how we are dealing with the, uh, their input we have to be very very careful about these things then another principle of research it talks about the beneficence it says that uh, there we do not have to harm anyone however there has to be a maximum benefit for the participants and the minimum uh, minimal risk for the participant we want to get the maximum data but we have to ensure that people who are giving us the inputs or the participants they are at the minimum uh, risk for example if we do any kind of clinical research and if we are if we are testing any kind of drug on human beings so we have to ensure that people they do not get harmed in any manner so protection uh, it says that you know maximum benefit to the participants and of uh, the minimal Uh, risk to the uh, people who are helping us in getting our research done then it talks about respect of others then protecting the subject humans we do not have to harm 
responsible publication now since we are into academics there can be some kind of research which is being done for the practical Im implementation maybe basically in the case of medical when we have medical kind of research it is more of uh, the uh, you know the societal benefit uh, or the welfare of the people is kept in mind any kind of research which is being initiated by the ministry of health uh, by our uh, indian government so it has got long term impl implications on the society but however when we are talking about the academic fraternity uh like maybe the social sciences or maybe the medical uh, or maybe the engineering background or biomedical whatever we have to be very very careful about the publication also and we have to ensure that we do not plagiarize or we do not have the duplicate publication then uh, another principle of research ethic is uh, protecting the anonymity it means keeping the participants anonymous it involves not revealing the name caste or any other information about the participants that may reveal their identity now this is very very essential uh, people will only give you information when they are sure that it is not going to harm them in any manner so as a researcher we have to ensure we are not backbiting we are not ditching them we are not cheating them in any manner and we are keeping their identity under wraps for example simple example whenever we have any kind of rape victims um, coming on screen in television you might have seen the faces are blurred or maybe uh, you know like if if anyone is uh, injured very badly the faces uh, uh, or maybe you know uh, the body is blurred or the screen gets blurred it is basically to uphold their identity not to disclose it because you never know how people are going to uh, react you know if in case uh, reality comes in front of them so that is very very essential if if anyone is helping us to give us the data we have to ensure that their identity is under wraps once you give them this surety i'm sure my dear friends people will give you all possible uh, support in terms of the data then it talks about the confidentiality of course the personal records have to be kept very carefully uh, we have to uh, save the information related with the discussion related with the research or maybe the uh, you know uh, people relating uh, who are whosoever are the participants at any point of time these participants they can withdraw themselves they can continue helping us or maybe uh, in terms of the methods which we have used to get the uh, data and of course the participants have the right whether they want to answer or whether they want to withdraw their themselves from the research and it says another uh, another one of the most important principle of uh, research ethic is non discrimination we should not discriminate our participants in terms of our caste creed sex race ethnicity or maybe the other other violation um, where uh, it is going to hurt their sentiments uh, when we are talking about the study then uh, it says that uh, we have to be quite uh, open uh, to the uh, there has to be openness on the part of the uh, researcher maybe in terms of data collection maybe in terms of sharing the research uh, result uh, or maybe the interpretation and of course uh, we should always encourage uh, to get constructive feedback because feedback always help us uh, to improve better and of course uh, we have to take care about the intellectual property rights also we are not infringing in the privacy uh, privacy of anyone and uh, maybe uh, we are not copying the work or maybe we are not stealing the logo so on and so forth however uh, being pragmatic people do it very 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 nicely and of course uh, we have to give uh, credit to the intellectual property of others as i told you not referring others article as your own uh, under your own name then uh, then comes the justice uh, now justice is said that uh, it it all deals with the concept of fairness we have to be fair in our experiments or maybe in our data or maybe with the people and uh, we have to show we have to be very very sure that we are not discriminating and of course we are adopting the same methods methodology or maybe the treatment whatever kind of treatment uh, everyone is on the same platform that means equality in terms of research it, uh, this is one of the most important um, uh, uh, principle 
However, there can be some other principles also. For example, I told you that there has to be the minimum risk of harm. People who are, uh, we cannot do research in isolation. Of course, we have, we need to get participants. So it is very, very essential that we do not harm the participants. Uh, maybe physical harm or maybe the psychological harm, or maybe we do not keep our promises uh, or obligation, or maybe uh, we are violation of their confidentiality. You have made a promise that it will not be divulged, but you're doing it. So that is uh, something which can harm people. Or maybe any uh, any any kind of misleading practices. For example, in business ethics, uh, you know, one of the business ethics says that companies they, they should not do any kind of false advertisement. They should not give false promises just to dupe the audience. So definitely, those are the um, uh, I think that one should follow. Maybe for example, we've got some kind of professional responsibility also. That means uh, we have the responsibility of not harming and of course to share the right input with the right people for the right decision uh, making so because we know that ethics are nothing but they are the guidelines to tell the truth and to keep our promises so it talks about the minimizing the risk then secondly is obtaining the informed consent anybody who's a participant in the research we have to ensure uh, the uh, consent is voluntary no payment has to be made to the researchers and um, they we have to be judicious enough to decide whether they are willing to be a participant or whether they are not willing to part to part participate and what kind of information should be informed that what is the purpose of the research why we are uh, collecting the data what is their role what why, what kind of benefit or risk they would be in, uh, facing in case if they participate and of course uh, they have got the freedom to decide which answer which questions to answer and which questions to uh, skip and in case um, uh, what they um, they can uh, where to contact in, in case if they've got any query then protecting the enormity and confidentiality we have already discussed that uh, we have to ensure that we have to win over the trust of the people and keep our promises of not divulging the information we have to be very very, very reasonable with the obligations that we have uh, to refrain from uh, you know violating our own uh, own uh, thing this thing and uh, for example we have to be quite loyal we have to be honest enough we have to respect people we need to have kind of compassion we we have to ensure fairness so on and so forth these are the few things which have to keep in terms of uh, our um, confidentiality also that the information will not be uh, uh, disclosed with anyone else then avoiding misleading practices as i was just discussing uh, with um, in terms of business ethics uh, for example I, I told you that there should not be any kind of uh, uh, you know gender biasness uh, there should not be any kind of false advertisement there should be kind of uh, fair treatment that should be given to the people their people should be law abiding or maybe they should be quite transparent there has to be kind of accountability so on and so forth for example if we talk about the social ethics we know how to behave what to speak what not to speak uh, not to uh, not to uh, insult people we should not have any kind of jealousy or maybe uh, any kind of greed these are all unethical behaviors that one one is there we have to be truthful honest we have to have kind of that kind of kindness so uh, we need to be more charitable we, we need to have more courage in case if we talk about the social ethics however there are certain ethics which are also related with your business and there are a lot of other ethics which are related with the political whichever field you go you will find ethics they are always a part of it and uh, then it talks about the confidentiality then avoiding misleading practices and the last one is that that um, we always have the right to withdraw because whenever the research is being done uh, we are talking in terms of society we are talking in terms of uh, ethics and we have got the freedom and the independence uh, to decide which are the topics which are quite confidential how we are we're supposed to collect the data who are the participants what is the information that should be given to them or um, uh, how whether and and of course, uh, they should be aware that they have the right to withdraw at any point of time. Uh, any participant, uh, they can always withdraw. There is, should not be any kind of compulsion uh, should be imposed on them. And we all should be uh, quite open to the criticisms and the uh, uh, you know and the uh, feedbacks because that help us to uh, perform better. And of course, uh, uh, research ethics they are basically related with the values, with the norms, and the institutional arrangement that is being done by the companies uh, to ensure that there is no kind of misconduct it is not necessary it has to be related with academics it can be related with uh, uh, it can be related with our 
any profession also so however more transparency more integrity more openness more responsibility more respect and uh, non discrimination these are the few points that we need to keep in mind when we talk about ethics and of course we have to talk about the protection of the vulnerable groups of people who are the people who would be uh, suffering the most so we have to take care maybe for example minor children or maybe the um, mentally ill people or maybe the handicapped people we have to be very very sensitive towards their feelings and respect their um, uh, personality or the uh, thoughts that they are giving us towards our research then uh, the skills of the researcher i am sure uh, these are the points that we have just discussed uh, uh, related with integrity and all all those things so there has to be a confirm informed consent of the participants also because our research is incomplete without participants so we focus more on participants in that um, uh, what are their risk what are their benefit they have the right to be informed they can withdraw at any point of time there should not be any kind of compulsion uh, for them it is a voluntary response that they help us in collecting our data and there should not be any kind of payment that should be done to the participants for our data collection then it talks about the informed process i think we should not um, just uh, go through uh, informed consent before the starting of the study we have to talk uh, we have to take care who are the people what is their culture what is their thinking what is their background how they are going to respond to us or maybe the pilot testing at the time of the beginning of the uh, study uh, we need to get all kind of support we have to tell them what kind of what are the risk and the benefits of the study and of course uh, how they will be involved and what kind of support we want from them and during the study is rekindle the ethical principles that we have just talked about in terms of integrity in terms of confidentiality non discrimination honesty respect uh, carefulness accountability so on and so forth we have to take care when we are talking in terms of uh, participants then address the issue of concern then again the risk and the benefits these are the things that have to be informed now there are certain advantages of our ethical research also uh, firstly if we follow the ethics or the principles of research um, it promotes the aims of the research why we are doing the research it increases the trust among the people uh, for the researcher and the respondent that respondent is basically the participants and um, of course there has to be an accountability of the uh, data that you have collected and uh, another advantage of research ethic is that you know the values are quite vital to cooperative work we can always have cooperation and coordination when we are able to bin, uh, build trs trs like trust respect and support so that will only come with loyalty or the obligation that you have towards the society or towards the participant you fulfill those or those obligations only then uh, we can get uh, the commitment levels from them so these are the advantages of the research ethics however there are certain uh, limitation also of the research ethics for example there can be some psychological risk there can be some social legal economic risk we have to ensure that it is all uh, law abiding we are not uh, uh, you know we are not uh, keeping anyone in dark we are we are ensuring that we are getting the right information from the right set of people and of course the we uh, we have to sure that the participants are free enough to share the information they are quite well informed about the research the motive the, their role uh, their rights their pass whatever so th we have to be very very sure about the kind of risk that we uh, inherit and there are certain studies related with tribes there are certain st studies which are related with the culture so we have to be quite careful about those uh, kind of st studies we don't have we don't have to make them offensive we don't have to feel them feel that they are discriminated in any manner so we have to be very very careful about those um, things also so these are the limitation of research that we have to be very very sure that there should not be any kind of psychological exploitation or any kind any other kind of exploitation then it talks about how we can ensure the ethics at different steps of the research we need to collect the data we have to outline the ethical mat matters we have to see who are the stakeholders who would be getting affected whether it is going to be men female children old age ill or mentally ill people handicapped tribal people whatever whatever research you are doing and of course we have to ensure that uh, uh, that uh, the ethics are being followed at every step of the uh, research whether it is at the time of 
data collection basically it is more important how we are interpreting the data how are we there should not be any kind of uh, malpractices now this is one of the most important slides uh, it says about the uh, unethical research conduct it's it says that there should not be any kind of uh, deception no cheating on the part of the researcher uh, or we are withholding information or we are giving false information that is very essential or uh, we 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 have to be very sure that the our research does not lacks any kind of objectivity integrity honesty these are the principles that we just discussed there should not be any kind of misinterpretation of the result and um, we have to ensure uh, that the methods or the theories that we are quoting they are correct no fabrication or falsification of data in terms of any kind of data if you are uh, getting maybe in terms of your age or maybe income or their feeling or their experiences we should not falsify we should quote it as it is if anyone is 21 years old we should not say okay she is 35 years of old age then not following the uh, appropriate assumption of authorship to a uh, publication we have to follow the norms of the publication no fabrication in terms of that also another unethical research conduct is not respecting the right to privacy i have been con continuously talking about the principles of confidentiality honesty so we have to ensure uh, that um, we have to respect uh, the individuals who are the uh, part of our research in terms of uh, our their human dignity or maybe the kind of uh, the, how we are reusing that in the data or whether we have got the uh, consent to reuse it or the respect for the third parties or the privacy respect for the family respect for uh, respect in terms of their safety or maybe defining their roles and um, responsibilities then uh, not respecting the right to normality and confidentiality is very very essential it is their data it is their right to protect themselves so people who are collecting data they have to be true and honest and loyal to their work of collection or the research and of course uh, not respecting the rights of the vulnerable group the data the, the research that you are doing it can be um, related with children with prisoners illiterate people who are uh, downtown maybe the low social status or the handicap people they are the most vulnerable vulnerable basically means they are the people who would be getting impacted immediately if you are doing any kind of research related to them so we have to keep them in our mind very very carefully and not having due consideration for the environment it is a kind of a corporate social responsibility that you have towards the society and the environment so whatever kind of uh, test you are doing you have to keep uh, in mind that it is not harming the society at the large and the environment then of course there should not be any kind of embezzlement of the ideas this is one of the unethical ways plagiarism should not copy their own, own somebody's work uh, and write it to your own credit uh, we have to keep in mind about the intellectual property right uh, also that i uh, quoted earlier in my presentation then no falsification in terms of uh, data the result huh? so we do we don't have to uh, hide the data or add anything from our own side fabrication of course uh, maybe the photographs or the images uh, morphed uh, because we are in the time we are in the internet area so people photos they can be easily morphed morphed basically means uh, where you can you know change the photo or photo of somebody and put it somebody else so like whenever uh, we have got internet frauds or maybe uh, any kind of frauds this is because of the morphing where you can change the face the body somebody else's and the faces of somebody else's we should not do it that is not a part of our research ethics then it talks about we should not fraud uh, we should not do any kind of fraud uh, in terms of our research non compliance of regulatory guidelines we have to follow the rules we have to be law abiding that's what i have been telling earlier also we have to abide by the rules and regulations which have been made maybe by ugc maybe by iccsr or maybe any research um, institute which is uh, which ha which has permitted you to con conduct any kind of research so we have to ensure that all those laws uh, they are properly uh, guided and no violation in terms of law is that way in in that then inappropriate uh, authorship uh, definitely people who are actually the authors or the researchers their name should be included they should be given due respect they they should be acknowledged maybe if you are picking up any references they are they are giving due respect uh, basically it is in the case of uh, more of the phd thesis or maybe in terms of writing a book so on and so forth then we should not hold and withhold any data 
we should not do and we should not attach any kind of fraudulent paper paper uh, which can be harmful for the participants as i told you there are a number of vulnerable people in terms of the minors in terms of prisoners illiterate people or maybe people who are who are not that um, good enough uh, who can understand things better so we have to be very very true to them also then uh, why why is it that unethical behavior is there it can be because of the ignorance of the researcher you were not aware you just copied a picture and you are not aware or you just forgot to give the reference as I, I just i was just quoting the example earlier also so that way is ignorance is can be one of the causes of your uh, misconduct and um, for example if like people are not aware how to um, maybe how to write the reference or they do not have the idea about the bibliography or they have simply forgotten so they out of ignorance it can be one of them then uh, policies and the standards of the institution should be taught to the students people who are into research they should be well aware they should do thorough uh, investigation what are the rules and regulation if i'm going to do the uh, research how i'm supposed to follow what are the rules what are the laws what are the law abiding um, things that we have to keep in mind before we proceed with our research so policies and the standards and the procedures should be very very clear in the mind of the researcher before they proceed uh, for their research then uh, it talks about um, the respect and the justice i have already talked about it this is the principles of uh, research ethics mainly we have discussed so many of them but the highlighting ones are the respect justice and beneficence now uh, as i told you that uh, beneficence is basically uh, beneficence it basically talks about that we do not have to harm people and there has to be the maximum benefit for the participants and the minimum risk for the participant and justice is talks about the fairness that there should not be demarcated in any way and there has to be a respect for the research participants for the sponsors of the research who are giving money uh, for the research you have to be true and loyal to them and for the communities or the participants uh, participants um, uh, wherever they are coming from there should not be any kind of discrimination on the basis of caste sex or anything else or of course there has to be the uh, respect for the academic fraternity and it says that um, if we follow these principles of ethic research definitely the motive for which we were doing the research it would be uh, fulfilled and the research uh, the it should, and uh, the research would be justified also then uh, these are the principles again uh, the uh, respect for the people uh, in depth and the justice that everyone has to be treated uh, equally there no one should be harmed maximum benefit for the participants and minimum risk for the participants and respect for the others so this is how the uh, ethics were revolved uh, way back in 1900 but through berlin codes and uh, the, this is nuremberg uh, code is all related with the medical uh, research declaration of helensky belmont report there are different kind of reports related with the codes this was again all related with the medical declaration of helensky in 1964 and uh, it says that before we are going with our proposal proposal uh, we have to be very very careful in terms of ethics that there should be respect and dignity of the participants privacy and confidentiality and and people who should be aware of the about their benefits and the risk they would be exposed to and of course the community system the professional competence of the researcher the skill of the researcher it was one of the points in my previous slides also and of course there should not be any kind of compulsion on the part of the participants to answer the question no money should be paid no undue influence should be given to them and of course there should not be any kind of conflict of interest when we are talking about research and we have to keep in mind the people who will be affected more that is the vulnerability and then it says that uh, how do we submit a proposal for the ethical clearance so the points which we have done earlier uh, they are almost the same the benefits the risk the privacy confidentiality respect and dignity for the participants the capacity of the researcher and the protocols or the laws uh, which govern the research so that's all from my presentation and it says that an educated person is a person who has learned to learn and change so in case if you have been a researcher who was following unethical practices so we can of course uh, we can change ourselves and become more towards it and it says make excellence a habit so it says that's how far we can go in our research it's all in our hands uh, to be quite ethical in our research and it says these are my books in the market hrm is my area and human resource management and again these are two books which come so thank you so much everyone so uh, thank you be ethical make a judicious uh, judicious decision what are the ethical practice that one should practice uh, once we are the researchers so
that's all from my side madam